Hey guys and girls, welcome to the show. Uh, today, we want to talk about insurances. So my name is Davey Mack and I got Stephen here. Stephen's an insurance broker for Oz Brokers. He's got 15 years experience in insurance. And the story of why I got Stephen here was because I do a lot of videos online and I did a video on insurances because I think a lot of small businesses don't do much uh, with insurances. And there's a lot of business risk when you start a business. So I did a video, showed it to Steve. Steve said, oh, that's a great video. But there was a lot of things that I didn't know. And a lot of things that I said that probably wasn't correct because I'm an accountant and I know everything to do with tax and accounting. But when it comes to insurances, not as much. I just know what the insurance is. So it's best to bring the expert in and have Steve talk about insurances rather than me. <laughs> yeah, so um, uh, I met uh, Davey and looked at these insurances. I'm a senior account executive at Osbrokers SPT mm-hmm. and um, and have been dealing with Davey with insurances at, for himself as well as his clients. Funny story, I actually did a check on Steve to make sure that he was giving the best price for our clients um, and he did. So I was like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that's why we work together. <laughs> but yeah, he's been doing a really good job with my clients and I've been referring quite a few clients to him. So yeah, insurance broking is something that I really enjoy. Mm. Um, it's uh, I see myself as part of the business um, mm. team in order as to be a risk manager uh, for that team, helping guide the the new business owner or the current business owner with all the pitfalls in insurances and what insurances they should look out for and how to offset the risk of the business. A lot of business owners have a lot of risk when they start a business. When you're an employee, you're covered by the business, you're covered by your employer, but when you start your own business, there's just so many types of uh, risks that you could take on. You have a lot to lose, basically, right? You can lose your house, you can lose your assets. Um, Man, there could be times where um, it could affect your relationship at home as well because of the stress. So it's always good to look at insurances. When you have a business, you're focused on just trying to make money as well as meet clients and grow the business. You don't really have time to make sure the business is insured and finding the best product for your business. Because there's a lot of things you need to look at, right? Like you need to look at, do you have the right insurance to cover your business or, or the risk that you have of your business? Are you finding the right premium? Um, is the right uh, characteristic to fit your your business? Because, you know, you like, for example, we had a client that um, uh, owned a tattoo uh, removal business and we need to make sure that we had the right insurances to cover that because we didn't even know what type of insurances to cover that business. That's right. Yeah. That's right. And, and that's where an insurance broker is worth their weight in gold. You know, we use various different tools to um, help us analyze um, a, a risk or a business activities mm. um, out there and, and to be able to uh, guide you in the right direction and to analyze your risk and tell you how you can offset that yeah. risk in, onto an insurance program. Yeah. When they client speaks to me about starting a business or when they've a, cl- a new client has came over and they've had this business and I realized that there's just so many risk uh, in their business, then I um, speak to them about insurances. And I'm not an expert in insurances, so I definitely um, refer them to an insurance broker or tell them to speak to an insurance broker because you don't want to start a business and you know grow this business to $1 million and $2 million or $5 million, and then it all goes down. Because something happened. That's you know, right. Someone decides to sue you or, you know, employee hurts themselves. And That's then right. And you add all this risk and you lose everything. And as a trusted advisor for our clients, we need to make sure that we protect their wealth, protect their business. Um, we don't actually necessarily need to do the work for them, but we need to be at least educating our clients. That's the most important thing. Yeah. That's right. Majority of new businesses, uh, when they come for insurances, they see it as a, a necessary evil. Um, you know, the, the landlord saying you need to have your public liability and then that's all they want. Just, a, you know, a piece of paper um, so they can start trading in the, in the new lease that the new yeah. premises that they've got. However, when we're able to speak to them and we're able to, um, you know, advise them of, of the actual risk that they're taking on, uh, then we can work with them in order to get a program that's going to suit their needs. You can take as much insurance as you want, um, or, or you could, uh, you know, have a reduced insurance exactly, right? uh, program to suit your needs as your business develops. Exactly, because like startup businesses only need to spend so much on insurances. There's, there's always some sort of insurance you need. Some insurance are compulsory, um, but then what happens is that 
like the as the business grows then you start spending a bit more money in insurance in that way it would actually save you money later on down the track too that's correct yeah because if something were to go wrong you don't lose everything and it's the same type of thing when you get your car insurance um, you, you know, you, you, you buy a brand new car, you get it insured because you can see the risk of out on the road that you could potentially have a car yeah. accident exactly. um, or, or you could potentially damage somebody else's car yeah. and you don't have the funds, the, uh, the capital behind you yeah. in order to pay your own car and to pay mm -hmm. the other person, the third party's car as well. So exactly. you offset that risk onto an insurance policy and that's what you need to do um, with your with your business insurance as well. What's the most important is the public liability insurance yeah. for any new business owner. Public liability insurance basically covers uh, if you're found negligent and as a result of that negligence, it's resulted to somebody being injured or property being damaged. So it doesn't mean that you have to be negligent for somebody to bring a suit against you. You could be found not negligent. However, they could still bring a suit against you. I have had um, a, a case uh, at a, um, a, a food store mm -hmm. where uh, the person uh, purchased a, 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 purchased a, an item from the food store, yeah. a, a salad of some sort, and asked if there was any peanut traces in there. Um, the the shop attendee didn't uh, didn't know, and they basically said that there wasn't. And unfortunately, the the person had uh, um, an allergy towards peanuts, and in basically suffered from that um, that allergy and from eating that food, ended up being a twenty five thousand dollar payout. Holy crap! It's just something that like that could have happened just by accident. Right? Exactly. And I hear a lot about public liability. It's sometimes compulsory when you rent a place, right? Like if you start a business up and you decide to have a business premises and you lease, you sign a lease. That's correct. And generally, the landlord will make it compulsory that you need to have a glass insurance to protect their glass, as well as public liability insurance. Yeah, yes. Because if you do something negligent in your business that then damages their property, they want to make sure that you have an insurance policy that can cover it because yeah. they know that you don't have a capital to, to rebuild their building. For example, if I use a restaurant, if, um, if a restaurateur um, causes a fire yeah. and burns down the landlord's building, the landlord would sue the the tenant, yeah, the tenant um, yes. and the public liability is what would cover the tenant. And just because the tenant has a company or is trading out of a company or trading out of some sort of entity, doesn't mean the um, tenant is safe. They can also get sued personally. Personally, right? that's yeah. right. So yes. that's why the public liability is really important. And this is not just for customers, right? It could be for anyone that's um, visiting the premises, right? That's correct, Yeah, because yes. yeah. I had like a horror story where I had a client that set up a restaurant didn't even open to the public yet. And he was just ordering stock. And then the delivery man dropped off all the, um, all the food and um, stock. And what happened was he slipped and fell. So the business hasn't even been opened yet. And they haven't even made $1 yet. And someone slipped and fell and they had an insurance claim. <laughs> That's right, yes. So imagine that, like you're running a business um, and you're spending thousands, not even thousands, it could be millions of dollars into this business and you happen to make $1 and there's an insurance claim on you. You would freak out, right? Of course. And what would happen most likely is you would delay your your um, the start of the business. That's and correct. You work out this, you may have to pay out that guy, you have to do all this mess. Your business loans and everything are, yeah. are going to suffer because you're not getting the income in. And the landlord will probably freak out as well. And what would happen is- He'll They will be, still want their rent yeah, and everything their and rent. you're not earning any income. It yeah. basically will snowball and it could put a lot of stress yeah. on you as the business owner, on your family that um, is supporting yeah. you, on your income and everything. So basically what happened with this client was that he fortunately had insurance and he his insurance company dealt with it. That's correct. Yeah, so he just he just went, oh, this is the claim. He lodged a claim. He didn't have an insurance broker, I believe, but he did lodge a claim, and then the insurance company dealt with it. That's correct. It. So they paid that person off. They settled um, that person was taken care of. So that's yeah. a good thing too, right? That's right. And you want to take the right the right measures in place to yeah. ensure that uh, you're keeping the everyone safe. Everyone safe. Yeah. Uh, as well as and if if somebody does get injured. That um that they're gonna be and it causes bad reputation to you if of you course. don't take care of that person. Of too. course, yeah. So of course. that's why insurance is a, a, a great thing, not just of for course. to save you money and save you in business, but also save you the headache. Because of course, something were to happen, then you could it could stress you out and it could cause problems um to you mentally. That's like, correct. Yes, and you can emotional statement. I feel so bad if someone hurt themselves at my office. Of course, yeah. I've even had another horror story where my client was not negligent in any way. 
Um, they have a, um, a stand uh, in the middle of the shopping centre um, with uh, um, the stand of sunglasses. Somebody walking forward um, did not see the stand there, walked straight into the stand, yeah, fell I over. That. I did that all the time. <laughs> <laughs> That's because you're walking through the shopping centres with sunglasses or <laughs> not seeing where you're going yeah. um, and fell over and then sued the sunglasses store um, you know, for injuries and for massages and Cairo. Now, they're not negligent in the sense that their stand was there. It yeah. didn't move out or didn't get in their way or anything. They walked into it. Yes. However, they still brought the suit against the insurer, the, against that tenant, yeah. and that tenant still has to respond. Yes. Now, if you don't have any insurance, uh, basically you have to then engage in legals um, and get your legals to respond to it, and that can be very costly. What this tenant, all they had to do is basically send that through that letter of demand through to myself. Mm. I engaged the insurance and the insurance settled. Yeah, it's very similar to car insurance when you have an accident as well. So that's you just get the insurance involved. That's right. Um, and that's it, right? That's like, right. And that's the point because businesses, uh, especially small businesses, are so focused on making money and trying to grow the business. They don't have time to deal with this type of stuff. They can get back to doing what, the, what they do best is um, basically making, money. making yeah. money and let the insurance broker um, deal with the claim and with yeah. the insurer and the negotiations. Yeah, I totally agree. So the whole point of this is to just probably lay out like what type of insurances are quite important for small businesses. There are so many types of insurance. You can probably there insure, are. You insure <laughs> everything. You can insure your pet, you can insure your life, you can insure your car, your assets. Beyonce insured her butt, so yeah, yeah you can insure everything. <laughs> I don't think I need to insure my butt, but <laughs> yeah, so um, let's just talk about probably the most important ones that we should lay out for small businesses, for startup companies as well, because we deal with a lot of startup companies. Well, it, it depends on the, the actual business itself and mm. what type of um, services they're going to be offer. Generally, if they're a retail shop, then they'll have uh, an assets or, or a cafe. They'll have the assets of the, the shop shop fit out um, yeah. or the stock um, and, and then that's where you, you would insure those for property damage. Uh, generally the landlord would request that you'd have glass insurance, um, you would have your public liability insurance uh -huh. and then there's other sections there that are available for a retail shop like business interruption yeah. which will cover the income that the business would have been generating if there was a claim under property damage. So for example if uh, um, I'll use the example of a cafe and there's a fire in the kitchen and they're, um, they're unable to operate for six months. So business interruption will cover the income that the business would have generated for that six months, which will enable that business owner to pay wages for yeah. uh, the staff that they want to keep, uh, pay um, their business loans, uh, pay uh, the, the lease because they're and still- pay their, own pay, well, pay yeah. their own wages as well. Pay their own wages and-, and, and their own bills would be yeah, covered. Yeah, because a lot well. of um, business owners and restaurants, um, they just get public liability insurance and that covers like, you know, what happens to the public, right? That's right. Um, but it doesn't cover if something were to happen to the shop and the loss of income. So it's basically like getting third party insurance on your vehicle. You mm. cover everyone else, but you're not covering yourself. And sometimes it's it's something so small like um, the building aircon is down, which affects the, the machines and damages the machines. And as a result, the machines are broken. And then you have to go and call a service company to fix it. They don't That's have right. the part. So it gets delayed for three months. And what happens then? There's another insurance that's available for um, people with machinery is machinery breakdown. Um, you can also get the insurance for deteriorated stock. If your cool room broke down and the stock that's in the cool room was all lost, a lot of um, cafes don't open on a Monday. So yeah. generally when the cool room breaks down that I've found that it usually happens on the Sunday. <laughs> and um, so Monday is the, it's been all, you know, all day with, with no refrigeration yeah, and no yeah. one's come in and um, it's all gone bad. Even if it happens overnight as a, a food preparation, they still couldn't serve that food to the public and basically gets all thrown out. Yeah. So if sense. you don't have that insurance, you could have you know, a few thousand dollars worth of stock mm -hmm. there. Now, you don't have to offset that all onto insurance and paying a premium. If you have the capital yourself and you wanna self-insure, that is fine. Um, the main thing is that you can uh, identify that risk mm -hmm. and know how you're going to deal with that risk. If it's something that you can uh, self-insure for or are prepared to take on that risk, then you don't need to offset it to your insurance policy. Yeah. However, if it's something that you want to be cautious about, you don't have the capital behind you, it would put a, a strain on your business and operations, then it's better to pay that little bit of premium 
and have that insurance for it. Yeah, no, I agree. So there are types, other types of insurances as well. I think there's some compulsory ones that the, the government forces us to do, right? There's like workers' compensation, right? Workers' compensation, yeah. yes. So if uh, any business is paying wages over $7,500 in New South Wales, then they are required to hold workers' compensation insurance. It basically covers uh, any medicals for um, a, a, an injured worker. In New South Wales, workers' compensation insurance is regulated. Yeah. Um, it's all done through eye care. The main focus with workers' compensation insurance is trying to get that worker back to work as quick as possible. Otherwise, your workers' comp insurance will, premiums will increase. And how does that process work with insurance? I think it's like you um, estimate what the wages are for uh, the year for workers' That's comp. That's correct. And then what happens is you pay that premium. That's um, correct. And then after 12 months, you the, the uh, eye care or the um, workers' compensation insurance company will send you a, a notice to just um, – key out what the actual wages were. The actual were. wages were, yeah. and then the and then it'll be adjustment, adjustment yeah. um, at the end. If you've underestimated your wages, you'll get a, a final adjustment where you'd have to pay more. Um, if you've overestimated, you'll get a, an adjustment where you'll get a return yeah. premium back. And the good thing about regulated insurance um, uh, is that by the government is that like the premiums don't always tend to go up, like if you make a claim. Well, if you make a claim, yes, they do. So there will still be there will still be loading yeah. and everything in workers' compensation I if there, there if you have a, a claim. Limit. Like if there was a limit of how small the business was or the claim was quite small, the Go up. It is depending yeah, on, yeah. and that's with all insurance claims. Yeah. Um, you know, sometimes it, just because you make a claim doesn't mean your insurance is going to jump up. However, if it, if it is a sizable claim, um, then obviously the insurer is a business and they are there to make money. And uh, what they will look at is they'll look at your portfolio, um, you know, how much premiums you've paid, how much they've paid out. Generally, they want to stay in the black. It doesn't mean that they don't yeah. go into the red. Um, and in that sense, then they'll adjust premiums accordingly mm. to try and get themselves back into the black. Yeah, and then to probably speak about um, insurances for cars, which most people were probably already know about, and that's compulsory as well, right? The CTP. Compulsory third-party green slip is um, something that is required in New South Wales um, to be obtained separately with the registration. And, and again, that's basically um, like, the, uh, like a... Um, a coverage for any third party. So if yeah. you were to injure anybody, mm -hmm. um, then that's what's going to be covered. Yeah, and then you can get comprehensive insurance, which is more for damages for your. That's your to car. damage your own vehicle. Yeah, and generally you can get third party yeah. property damage. Yeah, um, most people know about this type of insurance anyway, but like we figured, I figured I'd just talk about it yeah. as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So your personal important. insurance and your house insurance and yeah. and everything. So what type of insurances as well for small businesses? Professional indemnity insurance. Yes, that's very um, important. So yeah. any any type of um, business that is giving some type of advice mm. um, for a fee then they would need a yeah. professional indemnity insurance what, i think pi is quite com com uh, sorry compulsory for um certain associations so for yes. example i'm a chartered accountant so i definitely need to get professional indemnity insurance yes. they require us to get it to get our license yes so same goes to architects and lawyers as well so conveyances yeah. and, and and all the yeah. professional services and yeah. myself uh, yeah. uh, as an insurance broker we have our own pi insurance if we give you the wrong advice, yeah, we can get sued for it. And you followed that advice that we can get sued for yeah, it. Yeah, I got a horror story for that one because I had a, uh, I, I know of a colleague of a colleague. What happened was that they owned an accounting firm and one of their staff members gave advice to um, on, on the phone too. So it was all on the phone and one of the clients called and asked them, can I sell my property? Is there any tax um, consequences of that? If I were to transfer my property over to another um, entity and they the employee that picked up gave him some advice and as a result of that it's caused i believe a six digit figure in terms of tax and oh, wow. that person had to pay it and they sued the company and as a result the professional indemnity insurance covered it so it's not just individual it's all for the whole firm as well as well that's as right. employees that's right so luckily yes they were covered for it they didn't lose like a hundred thousand dollars, and that's sometimes the profit of the business. So it's really important for professional indemnity insurance or some sort of insurance that you need to definitely, cover for, for definitely. your industry. It's always best to like do your research. If you can't find your, the the information you need, it's probably best to speak to an expert. 
I would say the best thing is just to speak to an expert. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it makes sense. Let the experts guide you. Um, you know, call your, your insurance broker. Uh, let them point out what uh, pitfalls are there, mm. um, and, and at least that way you've got a backup as well. Because if they give you the wrong advice, they've got yeah. their own insurance. Yeah, well. exactly. Yeah, so you got yourself covered. Yeah, it makes sense. I, I agree. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's why you're here for me. <laughs> yeah. So what? Are, what, what about personal? Is there any other type of insurance? There are personal insurances. Yeah. So um, you can get uh, forms of income protection insurance mm. um, to protect your income so if if you were to sustain an injury mm. um, and unable to work then the insurance will pay you know up to 75 to 85 percent depending on what insurance policy mm. Uh, mm. you obtain and let's let's be honest like no one wants to talk about like you know the uh, things that go wrong and um you know the worst case scenario if someone if there's a death or if i die like i i talk about my death to my employees to my family members all the time Reason being is because I need to have a safety net. I need to ensure that my parents are taken care of. I need to ensure that my family members are taken care of. Same goes with employees. That's correct. Yeah. And so at least if something were to happen, they know what to do and they will be covered and they will be taken care of. You know that you've got uh, insurance policies in place that Mm. if something was to happen to you, that your family is going to be looked after. Yeah. The worst part about this is that so many people are educated to actually insure their cars their house that's right but that's they don't right. even show themselves and yourself is your biggest asset yes right because, because without you you don't generate money it's more important to yes insure yourself and a lot of these insurance you, you can speak to a, a specialized financial advisor yes um and a lot of these covers can actually be paid in from your super as yeah well. so i'm not giving you guys advice on like getting insurance for your, your yourself but i'm just saying just look at it have a think about it because there That's are correct, things, yeah. they, these are the risk involved. So what type of other insurances are quite uh, big that is new maybe uh, in the market? Um, uh, other insurances uh, available for businesses to protect themselves and pr- protect their uh, private assets is one management liability insurance, which is a, a four pronged insurance, which covers um, your directors as an office, yeah. directors and officers insurance, mm. uh, statutory liability insurance, employee uh, employment practices insurance, yeah. um, so, as well as your crime insurance as well. Yeah, so okay. employee uh, fidelity. So the employee does something that was uh, uh, they could they they could they can steal from the business. Um, you know. Um, swindle the books in some way or anything oh, right. and, and yeah. steal money from the business and it happens it does happen yeah, it happens. unfortunately yeah uh, unfortunately we uh, like with all ins- with all insurances it is to protect yourself from the unfortunate things that yeah. may happen and just calling the police isn't going to do anything like yes it's going to do something but it doesn't mean your money is going to come back that's correct yeah <laughs> that's correct yeah so that's um, t- statutory liability is basically there to cover any fines or penalties that may be imposed to you mm. by a, a government body which reminds me there's audit insurance as well right that's included in a management liability insurance as yeah, well so, so tax audit insurance yeah, so, so if your company gets audited by the government or by the ATO you, it's not to cover the, the damages or the cost. Um, that's another type of insurance, but it's also to cover the legal fees and accounting fees to um, and have someone to support you. Yeah, and um, Because th- Davey doesn't work for free. No, I do. I do. I reckon I do work for free at times. Yeah, it just depends on the client. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, so that's the type of insurance. Is there yeah, any so new type of insurance? There is uh, yeah. cyber insurance. Oh, cyber. Yes, that's a big one. Is something that is a required insurance for every business because every business is linked to the internet yeah if you're linked to the internet and you're using a computer on the internet um, to run your business then you are at cyber risk yeah even so. personal people are at cyber risk because um i've attended many seminars on cyber insurance and one thing that stuck with me was uh, just to, for the cyber hackers to get a name phone number email address and address they can get two hundred and forty dollars on the dark web. Just, just for just that. To, just for that information. Holy crap! I can make a lot of money right now. <laughs> <laughs> so you could imagine. So you could imagine, like uh, Davey, with the database that he would have with his clients and the information that you mm. have, including mm. ABN details. Um, you know, tax phone numbers mm. and and yeah, everything it's, like it's scary. that. Yeah, I, I freak out about that all the time, and that's why I educate all my employees and make sure my employees know what type of security is to take place um, in in the business. And be careful about emails 
That's you just right. you still don't you know. Can, you can still you can have the best IT facilities. You can have all your firewalls in place and everything. Mm. And just like a building, um, you have you can have sprinklers. You can have a, um, fire extinguishers. You can have fire blankets. Yeah, it doesn't mean that the building is not going to get caught on fire. Yeah. So it's the same with your um, cyber insurance. Um, uh, uh, an easy analogy to do it is that it's a, um, a, a cyber fire, a digital yeah. fire. You can get different levels of cyber insurance. You can get your first party mm. insurance, would, which will cover your costs. So you can cover your business interruption. So yes. if your business is unable to operate yeah. because of the cyber hack, which let's face it, Davey, we're all in a digital world. Yeah. If your business, if your if your computers went down, okay, I won't be able to run my business. You wouldn't be able to run your business until you're able to install backups or, or clean up and everything. Yeah, and that's what the cyber insurance will provide is forensic IT specialists to mm. get in and clean the system. How about if there's like a ransom on your data? It will cover also um, ransom if they're unable to um, unlock or get the, the hackers out of your system without paying the ransom. It'll actually cover the ransom. Yes. It so. also covers third parties. So if you sent malware to another company oh, wow. and um, and that company opened that malware, they could hold you responsible for for their losses. And that happens because like- It does. Just because you got hacked doesn't mean that- other people that you've dealt with hasn't been hacked as well. That's and I think um, the hackers are quite smart, right? They don't just hack one person. What has actually been found is the hackers will find their way into your system mm. and generally sit in your system for about six months mm. and watch your every keystroke and understand who you send emails to um, and how you ask for things. And, and then they will um, hijack an email. Um, and we have actually had a claim happen with one of our clients where the email was hijacked as the director, sending it to the accounts ladies um, saying, release these funds, I need to buy this property, I need to buy it now, release these funds at ACP. And a lot of the um, claims that happen are generally for human error. So there is a human pressing a button or doing something. Yep. Um, and because of our nature of wanting to help yes. and seeing this urgency, the person did release the funds and, and then basically they were gone. Yeah. And basically that could just make or break your business, right? That's correct, yeah. yes. So that's why yeah. I think um, that cyber insurance is quite important. I have cyber insurance for my business as well. These days, um, the ATO as well, the Australian um, Taxation Office wants us to be more digital. Um, there are new softwares in place for our tax systems. Um, everything's going online. So I think actually one day cyber insurance will probably be compulsory. I believe so yeah. as well. I yeah. do believe so. Uh, it, look, it'll either be compulsory and regulated in a sense, um, or it will become uninsurable because of the the premiums that would be involved. Yeah. So definitely get your insurance now. Yeah. <laughs> um, think- because compared to um, uh, the premiums from before, they they are on the increase because of the uh, amount of claims yeah. that are actually happening. Yeah. So that story that you mentioned is like an internal um, issue, but there are times where uh, what could happen is that the hacker sends a invoice with the uh, the amounts changed, the the BSB and the account number That's changed yes. to to your client. That's correct. Um, and if something were to happen where uh, that person actually paid for it, that client paid for it, and it was like six digits, what would happen? Who who owes the money now? Then, <laughs> well, exactly. So the clients paid for it, so it's not the client's fault. They yeah. receive that invoice with those change I don't details. Think, yeah, exactly. Um, as much as we say that you need to check it and check by phone now, mm. um, you know, still it happens. If I was the client and I paid sixty thousand dollars for uh, for an invoice that was sent from their email, I'm not going to pay that again. I of would, course, yeah. I would, of course, I would demand that service because they were sent from their emails. That's correct. As a service, so you you wouldn't want to um, upset your clients as well and exactly. making them pay twice, and then yeah. they have to try and chase chase it up as well. So yeah. that's where if you hold the insurance, you hold the power to be able to claim on that insurance. That's why I think um, cyber insurance is so another important, thing yeah. with the government uh, with the regulations mm-hmm. that you need to inform all, all your clients depending on the type of businesses that you're in or or what turnovers you have, that you would need to inform your clients that you've been hacked. Yeah. Um, and that's costly as well. It could give you a damaged reputation. Mm. Um, and then cyber insurance is there to help ensure that your reputation stays intact. A lot of the times, once a cyber hack has been found, the quicker you notify your clients um, and get ahead of it, yeah, 
if you have the cyber insurance because they do it all for you. There yeah. is an assistance line that's 24 hours and you can call it and they will get onto it straight away. Then your clients see that you, how you respond to it. Yeah. And that actually then gives them more, um, Trust more. Like that? That's yeah. correct. Yeah. yeah, more trust yeah. in you, and more, then more trust and security yeah. that you're that you're able to respond yeah. to a situation like that. If I had my information um, passed out to someone else and sold to someone else, and this company like just just said it wasn't us or didn't tell me earlier, then I would be yeah pretty peed off. Really. Yeah. yeah, I'm not dealing with them I'm not again. Yeah, with that's them right. Again. Yeah. yeah, and I wouldn't even just. I might even go to the government or I might even speak to the uh, regulators to you know make sure that they get fined for it. That's as well. right. That's yeah. right. So and there are some heavy fines that, that will be taken. A lot of um, small businesses um, or medium-sized businesses uh, basically saying, oh, I've got my IT somewhere else and, mm. um, you know, they will handle it. Mm. Unfortunately, they don't because once they, it gets beyond them, it's not their responsibility. It's not their negligence. They're not negligent for a cyber attack. Yeah. They can't protect you against, um, you know, a digital fire like you can have the fire brigade sitting at the front of your house um however it can't protect the the building from burning however if you've got the fire brigade there um and or cyber insurance it can definitely put it out quickly and then that's why where you got to think about the cost right that's because right. yeah you can have all these it security you can spend all this money on it um and it's probably going to cost you a fortune but if you had some sort of insurance to cover you as well and not need that much that high level like it's always good to have both, right? Yeah, of course. You, yeah. you, you always have your insurance to mm. offset that if something bad was happened. Yeah. But you still have your securities yes. as well. So you still need to lock your doors, put your alarm on. There's only so much you need. You don't need to have cameras in every room. You don't need to have insurance for everything in your that's house. That's correct, like, yeah. So that's why there's always, uh, for business owners as well as just individuals, they should just look at what risks there are for their business um, or in themselves and just work out which one's more high risk, which one's more important and That's right. get yourself yeah. insured and, for that. And see what risk you want to take on and, mm. and what risk you want to offset, offset yeah. to the insurance. I remember when I first started my business, I didn't act actually know how the whole insurance process works. So can you elaborate how that process works? Okay, so um, basically if you're thinking of starting a business, yeah. okay, you can contact your insurance broker mm -hmm. and um, explain to them what type of business that you're looking to start um, and provide them the information. If I had a dollar for every time I got a, a call um, saying to, uh, you know, that they're starting the business tomorrow and yeah. they, they need the insurance, you know, straight away straight so they away can sign their lease. Because of a certificate of currency or something like that. Yeah, exactly, yeah. because yeah. of the certificate of currency. Yeah. Okay, I, I'd be a billionaire. <laughs> you've obviously thought about starting a business a lot a lot longer before yeah. you've gone out and, to, and prepared to sign a lease. Yeah, yeah. The quicker you can get in with your insurance broker, the better job that your insurance broker can do. Certificate of currency is basically a statement to say that you have insurance to cover. Your, and it's your, paid. Yeah, and it's yeah. paid. So the person that you're dealing with or the business you're dealing with can work with you because there's correct. a lot of regulations in some certain correct, industries, yes. especially the building industry. Basically the, the developer or the builder or anything wants to ensure that you have a policy that covers if you cause any negligence that damages anything. Yeah, so what happens after that? So generally once we... Um, establish what type of business you have and what risk exposures um, you have and what insurances you're after. Yeah. Uh, your insurance broker will approach the, the insurance market. The terms are negotiated as well as extra benefits on policy wordings and everything are specialized and negotiated to ensure that you have a very comprehensive cover. There has been cases where I had a client that got insurance and thought they were covered, but they didn't have the right insurance. and. I got them to got you to speak to them, and then you realize that they actually didn't get the right level of insurance or right insurance for their um, business, right? In the end, if you don't have the right insurance, you've just got a piece of paper in your hand. So that's why I always say go see an insurance broker. I do say go do your research. It's always good to do your own research first. Yes. Um, but then, yes, it's it's a good idea to go. Definitely, definitely you can do your research on which insurance broker you want to go to. Yeah. Um, you know, wh what levels of trust that you can establish with that broker because – as I see myself as part of uh, every client that I deal with as part of their team, their business, and wanting the best for their business. How do we reduce our premiums then? How do we keep them down? 
Look, best way of reducing premiums is reducing risk. Mm. So if insurers um, are seeing that you're doing everything to try and reduce your risk, mm-hmm. then they will reward you with uh, reduced rates and premiums. Mm. Um, you can increase excess, uh, excesses. Um, so excess is like how much you pay to... So as a contribution to a claim. For example, if um, if you took out a property damage claim and mm. then there was damage to that property, uh, you can have an excess of $500 oh, okay. or $1,000 or yeah. $2,000. The more you contribute to that claim, it's the less that the insurer will have so to pay. Let me just try to get this straight. So the way it works is obviously you go and get your insurance, you, get, you pay your premium, and then if there was something that happened... Uh, whether you hurt yourself or whatever the, the insurance covers, and then you lodge a claim, right? That's yep. correct. Yes. Yep. And then so you would advise me of of an incident that occurred, and we will lodge a claim on your behalf. Yes. We'll go. We'll basically hold your hand and walk you through the claims process. And then what happens after that? So after the claim, is there a period before they pay you, or do they pay you straight away? Generally, once the claim's accepted, yep. um, then um, it, it will basically go through, and then the repairs will be done, yep. um, and then they'll pay whatever the you know the the costs are, yep. less the GST, yep. because then you'll claim the GST um, in your BAS. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Usually, when there's an insurance claim payout, there's no GST on it. That's yes. correct. Yes. yes. Your premium is tax deductible, I know for sure. That's correct, yes. Yeah, so all insurance um, related to your business is tax deductible. If it's related to your personal, income protection is tax deductible. Life insurance tax deductible, but only in your super fund. If you have a self-managed super fund, you can tax deduct the life insurance. Uh, how often do we need to pay the insurance? Generally, insurances are for a period of 12 months yep. and then they're reviewed. It's always important that if you change your business activities that you advise your insurance broker yeah. because it may change the risk exposure of your business yes, that's another thing. and um, your liability insurance. So that's why it's important yeah. that we make sure that you tell the insurance com- or the insurance broker all the business activities that you're doing so then they can make sure that they have the right business description on your policy schedule, yes. which is your contract with the insurer. So tips are basically from what we're talking about recently is just basically definitely look at your premiums, definitely look at the type of services, yes. top of your industry, um, what you're actually covered for, yes, what you're not covered for because yes. there are clauses and definitely find a good insurance broker. Definitely. Yeah. And excess, that's important too, right? That's correct. Yes. Yeah. I think some insurances, there is a like a cooling off period. Generally, all insurances, um, you have a 21-day cooling-off period yeah. from the from the inception date yes. um, and even at renewal yeah. uh, where, you know, you, you can cancel that insurance yes. and not have to, to pay anything. There's a general stigma that, like, insurance companies are trying to take your money, but it's not that they're trying to relieve the stress. That's correct. Um, protect you if something bad were to happen. And it's really important because... Like when you first start your business, I understand cost is really important. Like, you know, saving costs, making sure that you have enough money in the bank account to survive. Yep. But as your business grows, you're going to build wealth. You're going to build cash flow. You're going to build cash. And you need to protect that because you're going to spend five years building this business or 10 years or 20 years or your whole life. And if you don't have the insurance to cover you, if something were to go wrong, you could lose absolutely everything. That's correct. It's always important to review, right? That's because correct. Like it's just yes, you first started off as a startup and you're making like a fifty grand or hundred K a year, but then your business will grow. So that's correct, yes. You need to make sure that your insurance policies are Reflective. adjusted. Yeah. So your turnover, obviously the more you're turning over, yeah. the more business exposure that there is, your liability premiums yeah. will increase accordingly. Yeah. Um and and your business assets, okay, what cost a hundred thousand today? Doesn't mean it's going to cost a hundred thousand in ten years' time. Yeah. Okay. Costs are going up. What we need to do is ensure yeah. for the correct amount, yep. the replacement value mm-hmm. at that time. Yeah. Um, because we need to get you back into business as quick as possible. And then it's also not adjusting it to go up, but sometimes you can adjust it to go down because you're downsizing, right? That's correct. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. That's so correct. Definitely, those things are very, very important to look at. Um. Definitely best to speak to an insurance broker. Definitely look at your premiums. Definitely look at um, your excess, the process of how it works. Definitely look at what's claimable and what's not. Your risk management processes Mm -hmm. um, and and speak to an insurance broker to help you navigate the pitfalls yeah and as you can see it's a lot of work so it's best to speak to someone (laughs) about it so but this is the whole point of um having this discussion so people know what to look out for 
So hopefully everyone learns from this and um, go find the right person. If you want to speak to Steve, I'll uh, leave some details in the video for you guys. Um, or give us, give your accountant a call and get them to refer you to the right person. Great. Thanks guys. Thanks guys.